tail down by the handle and we're going to do like an E wrap because it looks like little cursive E's. And now when we got a tic-tac-toe, we know we're about ready. We're just going to swing out long enough to grab the first loop and pull it over. We're going to turn our tool and I'm holding the yarn over my index finger so I can use my index finger and thumb to pull the yarn over. Again, I'm going to continue grabbing and pulling over the working strand. There's nothing to worry about as far as getting it tight. You just need to have it so you can work with it. Our cast on is complete, so now it should stay well within what we're working on. And we're going to continue to turn and pull over. As you can see, it's pretty easy. I only have to use my fingers to grab that bottom loop to pull it over. And as we're finished with this, let's see, we'll see what our progress is. Anything that you can fit between these prongs, you can put in the center. So you could put like a clothesline cord through it. You could put a wire, another knitted cord inside. You could use beads on thread on a second knitting. Uh, you can use fluffy yarns. And on the larger ones, you can do fabric strips to sew them into coasters or rugs or pet baskets, bread baskets. Um, there's just like hardly any end to what you can do. You can do roving on a really large one and then felt it for purse handles. Okay, so now let's say we're about done. We want to finish this off. So our cast off is going to be make the stitch as we did before, pull all the way through, go to the next prong, pull it through, third prong, pull it through. Last prong, I'm going to pull it through, then I'm going to wrap it one more time to do that last stitch, pulling it off, it just locks it a little bit tighter to do that last stitch, and there we have our knitted tube, and it's a hollow tube, it could have had something in it or not.